Okay, cool. So wherever you're at around the uh, United States of the world, we have one thing in common, and that's that we love kids and families. We want to reach kids and families. And so I want to talk to you just a few minutes about three keys to offering first-time families a great experience. You know, you're going to have a family that's going to walk into the doors of your church either this weekend coming or soon that has have never been to your church before. And the experience they have decide if they come back or not. Have, have you ever been in a, a restaurant or a place of business and had a bad experience? Maybe it was uh, a, a hair in your food, food or maybe it was a, a waiter that was rude to you or you had to wait a long time. And so, you know, what do you do? You, you just don't go back. And you, you tell people, hey, I had a bad experience there. I'm not going to go back to that restaurant. So here, here's what I want you to understand, first of all, is that, and this kind of dawned on me one day, because I always spent tons of time on follow-up with new families, you know, doing all these things to follow up with them. But then it dawned on me that follow-up can enhance a good first experience, but it can't overcome a bad first experience. Let me say that one more time. Follow up can enhance a great first experience, but it can't overcome a bad first experience. And so you can follow up all you want to, but if a new family walks in the doors of your church and they have a bad experience, they're they're probably just not going to come back. Doesn't matter how if you go to their house, they're probably not going to come back. So it's so, so, so important to give families a first great experience. And, and here's, here's what we have to understand is that families are not really comparing that experience with the experience they had at other churches. They're comparing that experience to the experience they had at the store, uh, at the restaurant, any place they go, that's that's what they're comparing that experience at your church to. So your competition is not the church down the street. Your competition are every other places of the places of business and the the other the restaurants and everywhere they interact with people. That's that's what they're going to compare your church to. So it's so important to give families a great first experience. If you want to see families come back to your church. If you want to see your church grow, then it's crucial that you really focus on giving them a great first experience. You know, I, I read recently that the national average right now for the return rate is about 7%. In other words, about 7% of first-time families will come back to a church. You know, I think that we can do a lot better than that. Uh, we have, Our church is multi-site, so we have multiple campuses, and some of our Campuses, the re return rate right now is about 10% of families that come back. And so we're doing okay at some campuses and other campuses we're not. But man, we've got so much room to improve to get families to come back. And so here's what I want to do. I want to share with you three keys that will help you give families a great first experience. So let's jump into that. So here, here's the first one. Number one is if you're going to give families a great first experience, you got to put the right people in the right places with the right training. Now think about that. Who are your greeters? Who are the first people that these new families come in contact with and they walk up to the door of your church? It is so important to have the right people there. You want that first contact to be, to be with someone that has the gift of friendliness, right? Uh, you don't want the wicked witch of the West to be your greeters, right? I mean, if, they, if this is the first person that families see when they come up to your church, that's not going to be a good first experience, right? I mean, there are some people in our churches that when they got baptized, I think they got baptized in pickle juice. <laughs> and, and that's the way they look. And so, uh, man, you got to make sure that you've got a friendly people as your greeters that smile and that have the ability to make people feel comfortable and feel welcomed and feel accepted. And, and you know what, here's the deal. You may think about it. You may right now have a few people greeting that really shouldn't be there. And 
you may have to have some hard conversations. You may have to go to them and say, you know what? I want to find a better place for you to serve because you cannot afford to have the wrong people as your greeters and in the right places. And so it's so, so important. Take a hard look at who your greeters are, who your uh, check-in people are. They need to be people that are friendly, that can make people feel welcome, make people feel accepted. You know, also when people walk up, uh, let's say a young family, obviously the, the young families are the, are the people that are going to have kids and, and preschoolers and elementary kids. You want to have some people as greeters that, that are in the same season of life as they are. Uh, if a young couple walks up to your church and they are immediately, all they see is older people. Not to say and how to act around first time people. Have, have you ever been somewhere at a, a restaurant or a place of business and, and you walk up and the person is behind the desk and they basically ignore you? And, and you're, you, it's very awkward. You're, you're, you're like, uh, you want to say, hello, I'm here, but they just keep right on doing their business and they don't even acknowledge that you're there. How does it make you feel? It makes you feel devalued, doesn't it? it makes you not want to go back. And so it's important to train your greeters and those people that they're going to come in contact with how to act, uh, what to say, again, what not to say, to acknowledge their presence. You know, even, even if they can't get to that family right there, at least acknowledge their presence. If you uh, doing some consulting with the church uh, a while back and, I was in the lobby watching their guest services area, and there were several families that came up, new families that came up, and uh, the people in the greeter area just were talking among themselves, and they, did, they didn't even acknowledge those people. That's a big no-no. You've got to make sure that you are trained to immediately engage those, those first-time families. I do a lot of uh, research on Disney. Disney is well-known for their customer service. Now, they're not perfect. Uh, I'm here in South Florida, so I'm a couple of hours, just a couple of hours from Disney World. So go there quite a lot and spend time there. And I'm always uh, impressed with their customer service and how they take care of their guests and try to go the second mile to make sure people feel welcomed and accepted and their needs are taken care of. And uh, I did a little research and there are there's some secret rules that Disney employees follow, that they're trained, that they're taught. Let me, let me just share three of those with you. One thing that the Disney cast members are taught is they're never allowed to say, I don't know. If you're ever there, try that. Ask one of the employees that question, ask them a question. You will never hear them say, I don't know. And you know, that's something that you can take and, and put into your, your experience for first time families. Don't ever just ask you a question. I mean, think about it. You ever been in a store or a place of business and you ask a question and they just said, I don't know. And you're like, uh, okay, what do I do next? You just cut me off. Never say, I don't know. Train your people that interact with the guest. Instead of saying, I don't know, say, you know what? That's a great question. I'm going to find out for you. They may ask you about an adult ministry or, or student ministry or another area of the church. Instead of just saying, I don't know, that's not my area. Say, you don't know, I don't know, but I'm going to find out for you. And go and find out the answer and let them know. Another thing that they are trained to never do is they're not allowed to point. They're not allowed to point. Now, let me cl uh, clarify that. They're not allowed to point with just one finger. They have to use at least two fingers. And, and the reason is in some cultures, pointing with one finger is considered offensive. So they have to at least use two fingers when they point. Now, I would take it a step, a step farther than that and say, when you have a first time family, don't ever just point and tell them where to go. Always, always, always walk, walk them there, walk them there. 
we forget what it's like if to be brand new to a place and if, if a new family walks in and you just say well okay so your kid's classroom is going to be down that hallway take a left go up the stairs they don't know where to go walk 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 them personally walk them to the room never ever point i would say even after the kids get in their classroom man walk those those parents all the way to the adult auditorium so you never want to just point here's the here's the here's another one of their secret rules is they are taught to always smile always smile smiling makes such a big difference uh, to someone smile. You know, I, I have our first time guest. I encourage them to fill out a survey. So when a new family comes to our church, uh, I send them a survey and, and ask them to fill that out because we want to know how we're doing and we want to know about their experience. And if they fill it out, we give them a gift. And so I always tell our team, don't, don't give me the ones where they were like, Oh, you guys were great. You guys were awesome. To this because about a year ago, a new family, they returned the survey. And in the survey, they said, yes, you explained safety and security to us. Uh, you walked us to our classroom. She, they said, but they said this, but the lady at the classroom door never smiled one time when she was receiving our child. And you know what? That stood out to them and they remembered that. So we had a training the next week about make sure you always smile. Make sure you always smile. So it's so important to smile. So here, here's what I want you to understand. It's, it's important that you train your entire team about these things because here's a quote I want, you to, I want you to get. And it's this. While no one owns the guest, everyone owns the moment. Do you get that? Check that out. While no one owns the guest, everyone owns the moment. Now, what's that mean? Every single person, when that first time family is with you, you own that moment. Whether you're at check-in or you're at the classroom or, or you're uh, in the hallway, every single person owns that moment. They're with that family. It goes along with this. A guest family's first time experience is the sum of their interactions with all of your volunteers. Think about that for a minute. A guest family's first experience is the sum of their interactions with all of your volunteers. In other words, you can give them a great uh, check-in experience, but if the person at the classroom is rude to them, that it's so important that you train your entire team make a huge difference. So I would say the first thing is, man, it is so important to put the right people in the right places with the right training. So, so important. So let's look at the second key. If you want to give first time families a great experience, here's the second key. You got to know your guest. You got to know your guest. You know, I, I sat down and I thought about if I'm a guest walking into my church, what, what, are, what am I asking myself? What are the questions I'm thinking about as I'm a guest walking in? And here's what I came up with, first of all. When a new family walks in the doors of your church, they're asking themselves, where do I go? Where do I go? They don't know where to go. Again, we forget what it, we forget what it's like to be brand new and walk into a place and not know anybody, not know where to go. And so you need to answer that question for them before they ever walk in the doors of the church. So I would encourage down. Good signage is a way to answer that question. Again, walking people to their classroom is a good way to answer that question. Even on the outside of the building, do they know what door to go in? How are you going to answer that question? In the parking lot, where are they going to know to park? I would strongly encourage if you don't have guest parking, have guest parking. Uh, the worst thing you want a family to do is to have the worst crummy parking spot. Uh, at our parking lot here right behind us, we had devs and we have
I think we're back. I think we got disconnected for a second. Let me start back if you didn't catch that. So out here in the parking lot behind me, we have designated designated parking for our pastors and our staff. And guess what? It, it's the worst parking. That first time family. So we we park in the, the worst spot and we make the walk because we want our families to have a great experience. You know, you know when you go to the store like Walmart or Target. And there's this huge parking lot. And somehow by this miracle of God, you get a great parking spot right by the front door. Man, you walk in the store feeling good, don't you? Well, if you will give families the best parking, they will walk into the door of your church already feeling good about your church. As opposed to if you made them park out in the worst parking, they had to walk across the parking lot uh, in the heat with their kids. Uh, they're going to walk in the doors already not feeling very good about their experience. And so answer that question, where do I go? Here's a second question that families are asking when they walk in the door of your church. Internally, they're asking this, will they be friendly? Will they be friendly? Now, how do you answer that question for first time families? Well, obviously you wanna have friendly greeters at the door of the churches. So. that they'll have greeters at the doors but then once the family gets past those front doors man they're on their own and they walk in this place and there's pockets of people talking to each other and they can feel all all alone in the crowd and so be friendly at the doors but be friendly way past that uh, walk with them and get them connected and make sure there's friendly people uh, every step of the way. Here's another question that, that families are asking. When they walk in the doors of your church, they are asking, like it. Well, my kids like it. Are my kids going to have a great experience? So sit down with your team and, and ask yourself, how are we going to answer that question? You know, obviously one way is to make sure their kids have a blast, have a great kids program, have a great kids experience. Uh, Mom and dad can like it, but if the kids don't like it, mom and dad are not going to be back. Uh, and so the, the top reasons people pick a church, top two reasons people pick a church is this. Are they friendly and what do they have to offer my kids? And so, man, make sure. And you're a critical part of that. You're such a critical part of families coming back. Answer that question. Here's another biggie, biggie, biggie. Especially in today's society, today's culture, families are asking themselves this question when they walk in your church doors. They're asking this question, will my kids be safe? Will my kids, will my kids be safe? And how can you answer that question? Obviously, by having a good safety and security system, having matching name tags, explaining to parents that everybody in the room has been through a background check, that... Uh, there's always two adults in the room with kids that nobody's ever alone with a child. Explain these things to new families so they are assured that their kids are going to be safe. Because if they come and they feel like their kids are not safe, they won't be back. You know, have that, that also involves having the right ratios of kids to adults in your classrooms. If a new family walks in and there's uh, two volunteers and 35 preschoolers running around in the room, they're not going to feel like their kid's going to be very safe. And so it's so important to make sure that you answer that question. Here's the last thing. They're asking themselves this question when they walk in the doors of your church. They're asking themselves, is there going to be anybody there that I can relate to? Is there going to be anybody here I can relate to? Again, you want to make sure that you have people that are in the same seasons of life as they are. And so make sure they're connected with people that are in the same season of life that they are, they can relate, relate to. So know your guest. Here's, here's another thing I want to share with you about knowing your guest and knowing, knowing, know what guests don't like at church. You know, I sat down again and I thought about if I'm a guest walking to my church, what, what would I not like? What would I not like? that it might cause me not to come back. So here's the first thing. Here's some things that guests hate doing at church. First thing is people, all of us, hate waiting in line. Don't you hate waiting in line? It, it's not fun at all, is it? You don't want your guests waiting in line. So how are you going to make sure it doesn't happen? I would encourage you to have a separate check-in area for first-time families. 
don't make first time families wait in line behind your regular families. Have a separate check in area for first time families. You also to monitor your pickup times. I try on a regular basis to got in one of the preschool lines to see how long it would take me to get from the back of the line to the door. It took me six minutes to get from the back of the line to the door. Now, you know what? That's not good. If I'm a new family, I don't want to wait six minutes to pick up my kids. And so I, I'm working with that, that at campus to make sure we shorten that wait time. And so uh, people hate waiting in line. Here's something else that we kind of hit on, but people hate not knowing where not not knowing where to go they hate not knowing where to go so make sure that you have good signage again make sure you walk you don't point here's something else being ignored people hate being ignored if they walk in your church and nobody ever talks to them they sit down in the seat and nobody approaches them or is friendly to them they're probably not going to be back they hate to be ignored Last thing is this, the flip side of that, that is this. People also hate to be singled out and feel like you are pressuring them. Yeah. Have you ever been to a, 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 a store and the person was just right on top of you? Or a used car lot and they're right, right on top of you? It's like, you know, back off a little bit. Um, give me a little bit of space so don't overcrowd them. And here's the last, here's the last key. I think Kathy, I think I'm running out of time. I see you back on That's, the screen. So I, I'll good. try to keep going here. Okay. Here's the third thing. And that's this is you want to maximize the first eight minutes, maximize the first eight minutes. Here's, here's, here's what you need to understand. People decide in the first eight minutes, if they're going to return to your church or not, mm -hmm. the first eight minutes. The sermon, did you get that? The sermon, it starts in the parking lot. You don't want to in the parking lot trying to find a place to park. You don't want them standing in line the first eight minutes. So you want to make go through and make those first eight minutes uh, awesome for them. Make it awesome for them. A couple of last little things. Uh, about giving families a first grade experience is this. I would encourage you just to exceed their expectations. Just just exceed their expectations. Here's, here's, a little, here's a little secret thing that we started doing. We try to pick out one or two new families a week. And as we're checking them in, we kind of ask some questions. We ask the kids like, hey, what, what sports do you like? Or what candy do you like? Or uh, what, what uh, toy do you like? And so after they check in, we will run to the store. And if the kids said, I like M&Ms, we will go and we will buy a huge bag of M&Ms. And when the parents come to pick up the kid, we will have a bag of M&Ms there for the kid. If the kid says, I like basketball, we'll jump in the car, run to the store, buy a basketball. And when the parents pick up the child after church, we say, hey, we, we know you mentioned you like basketball. We want to get you a basketball, and it it just blows them away. It exceeds their expectations, and you do things like that, people are gonna are gonna come back. And so, uh, exceed families' first time uh, expectations, and they will be back. One last little thing that we do is we I actually got this idea from another church. When a new family checks in, our people that help them check in obviously talks to them and finds out about their family. Then after the family is checked in and in the classroom, that check-in person, that volunteer, will right there, write out a personal note to that family. Note something about, to that, about that family that knows that it's personal. Like, for example, so glad you just moved here from Kansas. Uh, glad you're in our area. I hope to see you back next week. And then we mail that letter that postcard to that family that week and we we have a coupon if they bring that postcard back then the the child will get a free t-shirt and so we found great success in that um, we'll every week have new families bring that postcard back and get a t-shirt and we know if we can get them back there's a good chance that we can see them become a part 
of our church. I'll, I'll share one story. Heavy, heavily, uh, there's a lot of people of the Jewish faith that live here. So we have a lot of Jewish families here in our area. And I'll, I remember a few years ago, there was a family, their third grader began to give them a lot of trouble at school and at home. And they got every week for their services. But the, uh, the, the rabbi there just couldn't seem to get through to the kid. And so here's this Jewish family obviously not believers in Christ, and they, they were so desperate that they saw our church and they said, you know what, we're Jewish, but maybe we can get some help for our son there, so let's just try it. And so here this Jewish family walks into our church for the very first time, and because we were there to welcome them and give them a first great experience, when they and their child a great first experience, when they came to pick up their child, they said, we noticed immediately that there was something different about our child because he had been loved on and cared for, and we had been welcomed. Well, you know what? They came back. And a few weeks later, during one of the invitation times, this Jewish mom and dad walked down to the front of the church and gave their lives to Christ. And why? Because they came and they had a great experience. And so, you know, you're going to have families like that, that God's going to bring... get church thing a try to give this God thing one chance. And you got one opportunity to reach them for Christ. And mm -hmm. a big part of that's going to be the experience that they have at your church. And so I would encourage you, yes, focus on follow-up. But remember, a great first experience can enhance, uh, a follow-up can enhance a great first experience, but it can't overcome a bad one. So give everything you've got to giving families a great experience. And if you'll do that, you'll see many of them come back and begin a relationship with Jesus and become a part of your church family.